What's up, y'all? How y'all doing? Welcome to another episode of Notable Prisons and the MS Occupying. I need y'all to get y'all sliders ready. And let me know where y'all, you know, where y'all watching from in the comments. And, um, you know, go to uh, South Wales over there and to the Goldborn Correctional Facility. So, let me tell you a little something about the uh, Goldborn Correctional Facility. Okay? Okay. Okay. It's an American, it's an, it's an, it's an Australian super maximum security prison for male mates. It is located in Goldburn, New South Wales, three kilometers northeast of the central business district. The facility is operated by the Corrective Services, NSW, an agency of the Department of Justice of the Government of New South Wales. The complex accepts prisoners charged and convicted under New South Wales and or Commonwealth legislation and serves as a reception prison for South, uh, South Wales and in some cases for inmates from the Australian Capital Territory. The High Risk Management Center, commonly known as Supermax, was opened in September 2001. This was the first such facility in Australia and makes the, uh, the center the highest security prison in Australia. Supermax was completed and renovated over nine months and completed on 420, 2020, April. The current structure incorporates a massive heritage listed in hand-carved sandstone gate and of and that was opened in 1884 based on designs by the colonial architect James Barnett. The complex is listed on the register of the National Estate and the New South Wales State Heritage Register as a site of state significance. So real briefly, Gomber's first lockup was built around 1830 and gallows were built as early as 1832 when floggings were common. The first Goldburn gallow was proclaimed on, on June 28, 1847, attached to a local courthouse when the controller of the prisons first reported to Parliament in 1878 that Goldburn gallow had accommodations for 63 segregated and 127 associated prisoners and held 66 prisoners, inclusive of one female. Now, the moment we've all been waiting for, right? Let's let's see who's on this list. Let's check him out. Malcolm George Baker. Uh, oh, he was responsible for the Central Coast Massacre. Let me let me tell y'all a little something about that Central Coast Coast Massacre. Essentially, it was a shooting spree killing that occurred on the evening of October 27, nineteen ninety two. In the central coast of New South Wales, Australia, a 45-year-old motor mechanic, Malcolm Baker, killed six people and an unborn child, injured one other person. August 6, 93, he was sentenced to life imprisonment for the six murders. Get your lighters ready. There you go. They smoked his ass. He's serving life imprisonment plus 25 years, and he's currently incarcerated. Next, we have Seth Gonzalez. The murders of his parents, Teddy and Mary Loiva, and younger sister, Claudine. Uh, three concurrent terms of life imprisonment with no possibility of parole. Sheesh. That's crazy. Next, we have Bassam Hamzi. The 1998 shooting murder of Chris Termazzi outside a Sydney nightclub and was subsequently convicted for conspiring to murder a witness against him. And he's the founder of the Brothers for Life street gang. Oh, he's the leader. Damn. Wonder how much time he got. Let's, 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 uh, let me see. Let me, let me tell y'all a little something else about Bassam Hamzi over here. Well, he was, t -t 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 one second, people, in April 2016, he was found guilty of involvement in a February 2013 kneecapping at a Bass Hill of another B4L member 
What's kneecapping? Could y'all inform me on that? The police alleged that he handled the gun and used it in the shooting, loading it, and then passing it on. He was convicted of three counts of reckless wounding and gun possession. And he was uh, sentenced in June 2016th. And then on February 2017, 2017 they were convicted of contract murder and the st of standover man Joe. And on December 26th, December 16, 2013, at his home in Strafield, Sydney. Damn. Yeah, getting out. Next we have... Abdul. Next we have Robert Hughes, actor and star of Australian sitcom Hey Dad, sentenced for two counts of sexual assault, seven counts of indecent assault, and one count of committing an indecent act involving girls from 6 to 15 during the 80s. Wow. And uh, so t he got 10 years and nine months with a non-parole period of six years. Wow. That's crazy. And he and he's out? Wow, he got out uh, in 2020. That's crazy. Next we have... Michael Cannon. Um, he uh, committed three murders in Sydney in 1998, and he is serving three consecutive life imprisonment terms plus 50 years and four months. But he has no possibility of parole. They just threw that little four months on there. It's like the icing on the cake. Like, that's the sprinkles. Next, there's Bilal Kazal. For producing a book while it's known it was connected with assisting a terrorist attack. And he got 14 years and nine years non-parole period. Next we have Ivan Millet. Uh, he's serving a consecutive term of life imprisonment plus 18 years because the for the Belanglo State Forest backpacker murders. But he died from esophageal and stomach cancer on 20, October 27, 2019 at Long Bay Correctional Facility, actually. Um, next we have Malcolm Nadine, and uh, he was convicted for two murders and an indecent assault on a 12-year-old girl and, that it, and the attempted murder of a police officer at the time of his arrest in 2012. Nadine was Australia's most wanted fugitive. And he got life in prison, plus 40 years. No possibility of parole. Um, Ngo Kan Fung. The, um, and he was convicted for the assassination of Cabramata MP John Newman. And he got life in prison. Balal Scoff. Wow. Get your lighter ready. This is probably one of the scummiest people I've never read about. He was charged with the Sydney gang rapes in 2000. And they gave his ass 31 years imprisonment and a 28 years non-parole period. Dang. So he's really, essentially, he's eligible for parole in, what, 2028? That's crazy, man. Next, we have Mark Valera. The 1998 murders of David O'Hearn and Frank Arkell. Two consecutive terms of life imprisonment. And last, we have Lindsay Rose. The murders of Bill Cavana, Carmeletta, Lee, uh, Raynette, Hollard, Fatoma, Ozono, and Carrie Payne between 1984 and 1994. Five consecutive terms of life imprisonment. No possibility of parole. Damn. Daniel, where you find this? Well, that's it for this episode, people. I appreciate you for watching. Stay tuned for the next ones.